Many have inquired, and now the time has come. Hi, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, and today we're going to answer one of our most asked questions. Should you care about Dolby Vision HDR10+, Plus, or what HDR formats your TV supports? While the debate rages in the nooks and crannies of forums and comment sections, we're here to provide some information that goes a bit deeper than bit depth and is a little more dynamic than discussions of metadata. So stick around as we explore the impact HDR formats have on your viewing experience. As you might expect, there are some factors to consider when thinking about HDR formats, such as the content you watch, where and how you watch it, and your TV's HDR performance. To start, the content you watch must be mastered in the right format for your TV to support it. You can check the format by looking for the Dolby Vision or HDR10 Plus logo directly on the product packaging, like a 4K Blu-ray, for example, or in the description of shows or movies on a streaming platform. If you don't see a logo anywhere, then it doesn't matter if your TV supports Dolby Vision or HDR10 Plus. The content isn't encoded that way to begin with. The second consideration is where you get your content from, since streaming services approach HDR formats differently. Generally, you can only access HDR content on Netflix and Disney Plus with a premium tier subscription. Most of the HDR content available is mastered in Dolby Vision, even the unhinged reality shows. On the other hand, HDR10 Plus content isn't as widespread at the moment. One of the main places to find it is on Amazon Prime Video, which makes sense considering they were one of the early adopters of it when Samsung first developed the format. However, Prime's more popular titles like Rings of Power, Reacher, and Fallout, for example, also have a Dolby version available on the app. Physical media is a bit different. The version of Dolby Vision found on 4K Blu-rays is a bit more advanced than it is on streaming services. It also requires you to have additional equipment, such as a Blu-ray player that also supports Dolby Vision. Otherwise, your content will just be played in HDR10, which might not matter that much depending on your TV. While our video focuses on stream Dolby Vision, we have an article over on the website that does go into the details of Dolby Vision and physical media so definitely check out the link in our description. Of course, though, the most important factor is the HDR performance of your TV. A TV able to provide what we call an impactful HDR experience is one that has a high contrast ratio, which means the difference between a highlight and a dark background is higher and therefore adds more dimension. A high peak brightness, usually over a thousand nits, means that highlights can get as bright as the content creator intended, and the TV won't have to tone map as much. In relation to this, a TV with good PQ EOTF tracking means that the TV can accurately interpret and display the scene-by-scene -scene brightness data, so you don't end up with glowing night skies unless that's the intention, or shadowy highlights. Finally, a TV with a wide color volume means that the TV has the capacity to display highlights in rich color, and low lights in dark colors as well. Essentially, when it comes to HDR, you're looking for a TV that doesn't lose out on details in the scene, whether from being blown out, washed out, or shrouded in darkness. Now, for a TV to have all those components and implement them well usually comes with a bit of a cost. Take, for example, the LG G4 and the Samsung S95D. Both TVs fit the bill in terms of delivering an incredible HDR picture quality, but for a price. For our purposes, though, the main difference between these two TVs is that the Samsung only supports HDR10+, while the LG only supports Dolby Vision. If we compare them side by side, while the LG is in Dolby Vision and the Samsung is in HDR10+, what we see are some minor differences in practice. Dolby Vision enhances the vibrancy of the colors and adds some pop to the highlights. But for some folks, that enhancement might seem artificial, while HDR10 Plus seems a little more faithful to real life. Even if the LG G4 displays HDR10 content without Dolby Vision while the Samsung continues to display HDR10 Plus, the differences aren't all that game-changing. The picture looks great, with HDR10 Plus content looking a little less flat overall. Similarly, if the Samsung displays base HDR10 content while the LG does Dolby Vision, the differences are pretty much down to personal preference. Do you want the pop and vibrancy of Dolby Vision, or do you find it to be uncanny or a little too enhanced for your taste? Now, you might be wondering if these differences can be chalked up to other aspects of the TVs, like panel type, for example. Thankfully, there is a top-tier OLED that supports all HDR formats, Panasonic Z95A. Comparing the three HDR formats on this one TV doesn't yield any differences from what we saw before. At this price and performance point, these TVs deliver an excellent HDR experience regardless of the format the content is mastered in. 
But what about other TVs that aren't designed with optimal HDR performance at the forefront? Like the Hisense A7N. Hisense, TCL, and even some Roku TVs, also known as the budget-friendly brands, don't have a loyalty to one format over another. Like the Panasonic Z95A, their models tend to support both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. Depending on your budget, though, the impact of one over the other varies. This means we can also use the Hisense A7N to visualize the same scenes on the same TV in all HDR formats to directly compare the experience scene by scene. But this time, we're looking at a TV with a peak brightness of 350 50 nits, all right contrast, decent color volume, but surprisingly good PQ EOTF tracking. The sum of its parts says, it'll look all right. But in practice, with just a basic HDR10 signal, it looks awful. Dark scenes especially suffer from raised blacks, loss of details, and undersaturation. In HDR10+, there is a slight upgrade. It's a bit better highlights-wise. Color-wise, there is a slight improvement, but the overall enhancements aren't as impactful as you'd maybe want them to be. But switching to Dolby Vision is like you setting up a different TV. This is still the Hisense A7N, and none of our camera settings were changed. The details that were lost, like strands of hair, have been found. And there are colors again! Rather than pallid skin tones, characters look like they've actually seen the sun. Though there's some definite oversaturation when it comes to colors, this can be adjusted for with the picture mode or through calibration. We also wanted to put this to the test with another cheap TV, so we decided to play around with the Dolby Vision settings on the TCL Q550F after we shot its review. For a TV that cheap, having Dolby Vision enabled meant you were actually able to see the stars in space in the opening sequence of our planet. We couldn't test it with HDR10+, as the TV doesn't support it. So, why is there such an extreme difference with these cheaper, lower-end TV models? There are a few potential reasons. It could be a case of the Dolby Vision stream having a higher bitrate than the HDR10 or 10 Plus streams, meaning those chunky blocks and dark scenes where details get lost just don't happen since there's more information in the stream. Though they're both dynamic formats, Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus don't use the same metadata. HDR10 Plus turns base HDR10 from static to dynamic data, meaning the dark points, average light level, and highlights can change scene by scene rather than remaining the same throughout the entire movie or episode. With Dolby Vision, it's a different process. Though the metadata is still automatically generated, like with HDR10 Plus, it allows the colorists to manually tweak the metadata to give them greater control over how the image looks. Which can translate to a better looking picture. You might notice, if you already have a Dolby Vision equipped TV, that if you watch a Dolby Vision supported stream, your TV might flash before starting the stream. More obvious example of this is when we put the Hisense A7N into Dolby Vision using an Apple TV to force it. The TV had to handshake with the Apple TV again. Upon rebooting, the picture mode and settings changed. It isn't a simple case of a switch turning on and the content looking better. It's that the content itself is encoded differently. But does that make Dolby Vision better? Well, it's hard to argue against the picture quality improvements on low-end dim TVs. Since Dolby Vision is a licensed product, there's a cost associated with it somewhere in the production chain. And for you, as a consumer, that usually comes in the form of premium tier subscriptions or a high-end Blu-ray player and associated Blu-rays. Meaning, the relatively low cost of a TV like the Hisense A7N might be enticing, but in about a year's time, you'll have surpassed the price of the TV with just your Netflix subscription. On the other hand, HDR10 Plus is a royalty-free standard that's picking up more traction in recent years from studios like Amazon MGM and Universal Pictures, among others. So content is becoming more widely available. Plus, there was just the announcement that Disney Plus will begin supporting HDR10 Plus on its streaming platform. While at present, it doesn't have the same visual impact as Dolby Vision, it's hard to know with certainty what the future of the format holds with increasing adoption. The conclusion, though, is that while Dolby Vision does objectively enhance the content by accentuating colors, details, and highlights, it's a matter of personal preference whether you find that appealing. On higher-end TVs, the Dolby difference isn't as impactful as it is on lower-end TVs. If all you're after is a great HDR viewing experience, then the capabilities of your TV matters more than what format the content is in. While we haven't touched on gaming here, it's still worth a mention that your TV's HDR experience will translate over into how well it games in HDR. At present, most consoles, except for the Xbox, don't support gaming in HDR10 Plus or Dolby Vision. And if you have a Switch, well, there's no HDR at all, so we can all wait with bated breath for that nebulous Nintendo Direct to see if that changes with the Nintendo Switch 2. That's all for our deep dive into HDR formats. What do you think? 
and let us know in the comments below if there are any other lingering questions you want answers to. Until next time, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Uh, thumbnail, I put thinky face because okay. we're gonna thinky face our way through this. Okay. We're going to think the house down boots. <laughs> hmm. uh, prayer hands? Prayer, prayer hands. hands. I could do a profile prayer hands.